Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Thursday night and another cup club with myself, my lovely friend Kirsty. And we have got another special guest on for you tonight, which we're going to, uh, who is a physiotherapist, um, who we're going to introduce in just a second. Um, but welcome along, everyone. Um, hope you had a great week. Hope you're uh, all uh, surviving and yeah. staying positive. Absolutely. National, it's National Hug Day today as well. National so Hug Day. Send everybody a virtual hug. Everybody um, a virtual hug virtual hub going on but yeah we've got a really really good guy coming on his name's paul and he's a physiotherapist from christchurch so um should we bring him in so he can bring him in himself? hey hello paul. Hi, paul i'll get this camera right in a minute i don't yeah. know what's going on <laughs> welcome along the cup of paul we'd love to see you tonight Hi, paul. good evening paul, how's it going good we're good we're excited to have you on Thank you for having very me. Excited, very excited. So, Paul, tell us what, what we all what, before we start. What we all drinking tonight? What's in your cups? Cup of clubs. Oh, I'm a bit boring. I'm oh, boring. water. Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Spiced it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, how funny! Yeah. There's no, there's no hot drinks, which is a bit strange, isn't it? Considering yeah. no hot drinks, no hot drinks, just water <laughs> and squash. I love it. <laughs> so Paul tell us what you do what 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 how you know what did you what do you do where are you yeah so I'm a physio um trained back in the day so sports therapy first and then went on to do uh, my physio degree or masters and that so that was in 2004 so but my sports therapy degree finished in 2000 so about 20 years worth of, of therapy involvement i suppose um did a bit in the nhs and then worked in Nuffield health for most of my career so i did a, uh, 11 13 years for them wow and then it was literally about two years ago to the day almost that i handed my notice in um and bridge health and well-being was sort of developed and grew and um, we got our property, our clinic, which is in Christchurch, which we'll talk about in a minute, no doubt. And um, and we got the keys on the first uh, of June, two two yeah, eighteen months ago, and we started on the twenty ninth of July, eighteen months ago. So we're almost eighteen months of trading. Um, so yeah, I'm a physio um, by trade. So any injury really. Um, sport is my background and, and orthopaedics. I've been worked in the, at the Nuffield for so long. So anything to do with orthopaedics, I'm, I'm more than happy with. Um, but yeah, any any day to day stuff, really. So lots of people who have been working from home, which I think is what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, yeah, unfortunately, more and more people are and we are seeing some issues around that. Jenny, I'm sure you've seen that a bit as well with some of your clients. All the time. Yeah, all the time. And um, it's amazing, isn't it? Even myself, you know, I'm used to working with people all the time. And I'm I'm literally now, I've also got, now got a desk job. And um, yeah, even now, in the end, I'm like really stretching my back out because it, it's, it's so much fun sitting and it's January, it's dark, it's cold. And yeah, I see a lot of people the same kind of things and a lot of us are working from home, isn't it? Yeah. I think the, so we, we sort of see two groups probably from from the whole COVID side of things and what relating that to working from home. So the first group were the uh, the who suddenly thought that Joe Wicks was the best thing since sliced bread and pee with Joe. And obviously it's pee with Jenny now, isn't it? So I should, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good bit of sales there. Right? <laughs> um, but not clearly there are there are other people out there as well. But um, it's um. That everybody, a lot of people went from maybe being on furlough and not actually having to work, but not that, that in a, in the right way is uh, what I say there. Um, I'm doing lots more exercise, so we were seeing people with tendon type problems, which is overload type um, injury, um, and then we saw the other group who people almost unfortunately became slave to work in a way, and they were working actually more hours, um, hardly turning off, not getting a break. And therefore, their activity level actually probably went down. And we saw people actually 
getting aches and pains as a result of that. And so the body works in a, in mysterious ways, you could say. It, it can be overloaded and give you problems, but it can clearly be underloaded as well. And that's so they're, they're definitely the two groups that we tended to see. And, and I'm sure we will see a little bit more now that we're in this in lockdown three. So yeah, absolutely. It comes by a lot of things, doesn't it? I think a lot of things we talk about, both in Kirsty's business, mine, and, and what you're doing, Paul, it all comes back to one thing, isn't it? Balance. Exercise is good, mm -hmm. chocolate's good, wine's good. In a balance, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Balance, right? little is bad. It's getting that balance right, isn't it? Absolutely. absolutely. So, I mean, it, I, I think um, Kirsty put on the on the the post this morning that I would talk a little bit about sort of desk set up and things like that. And um, I, d I think people have, have almost tied themselves in knots a little bit too much with the whole desk set up and ergonomics and that type of thing. And there is a balance to be had with the way that you are working from home or working at a desk. And it's the balance is don't sit in one position for too long. That's mm -hmm. the key, really. So it's not about um, and try posture gets talked about and posture I could I could sit here for probably two hours and talk about the bad things and the good things about posture mm. and certainly what I'm trying to say to my clients now is don't think of it as posture because there are connotations to that thinking about position thinking think about the position that you're working in now is that is that sitting slump for 20 minutes and people oh my god you can't sit slump well yes you can because it's not going to cause you any damage posture doesn't the position you sit in doesn't cause damage if it's comfortable to do, you can do it for a period of time, but then you need to move. So that's that's really what we're trying to promote now around the whole. Um, yeah. Trying to replace this whole idea of you've got to sit bolt upright and, and not move and, and be very static. And that's half the problem. We're not designed to be static. I mean, again, Jenny, when you're doing working with your clients, I'm sure you do some isometric stuff, but a lot of it is movement based, isn't it? And that's movement, isn't it? I was talking to a friend the other day actually about uh, a lot of trainers sort of go on, about, and it is important to get results from people. It is important, but a lot of a lot of the results are just getting people to move. Yeah, exactly. Um, to move more. Um, we our bodies are designed to move. And our body is the best sort of biofeedback system we've got. And they soon, they soon bite back and have a go at you and let you know by giving you pain, trouble, when you're treating it. Not as We're designed to be moving around all the time. We're not designed to be sat and desk, driving, TV. Um, so, yeah, bodies bite back, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's... Um, but and, and going back to that term balance or that word balance, I think is, is that, that's the... That sort of ticks every box, really. So it's about finding stuff that's right for you at the right time. Mm. Um, I, it, it's the same with, a, with being on a diet, isn't it? It's it's finding the right things that work for you that mm. are going to promote a healthy lifestyle. But at the, at the end of the day, the odd treat, like you say, a glass of wine or some chocolate or something, mm. yeah. um, it's, it's – it's, that's not going to make you fat or it's not going to make you unhealthy. It's when you do that repetitively that that becomes the issue. And it's the same with inactivity. If, you repeti if you're repetitively inactive, that's the problem, not, not being inactive once or twice. So. Yeah. I love what you said there, Paul, about um, people think about it's a slumping that causes problems. And no, it's not slumping for 20 minutes, half an hour, it's not going to hurt you. You're right. You haven't got to sit up, bolt upright. But try and kind of move and vary the way you're, you're sitting as well i love i love that point you made mm. so yeah i mean a, a, an easy example because people will say well i've always been told at work that i must sit upright and don't move or anything like that and oh i've heard that um or poor bad lifting technique that can damage you and all this type of thing and and again it's we can talk about lifting for a long long time and, and yeah it's it's are you capable of lifting that item that that's the key and that could be a hundred kilo deadlift or it could be five kilos 20 times it's whether you've got sort of capacity within you to be able to do that activity um so going back to the whole does it cause damage so a really easy example i can use my client my patients is i'll get them to bend their finger back like that and you hold it there and hold it there and hold it there and after a while it starts to hurt on the front of your finger if you bend it back far enough. 
Yeah. But then when you let go and the stress comes off, the pain goes away. Mm. And that's okay. in effect sort of what's going on when you sit in, in one position for one for a long period of time. You stress those structures and because and static stress is what the, the body doesn't really like. You start to get that feel of, of discomfort, stress, overload, whatever you want to call it. But then when you move around and everything is released and you go into a different position, um, those soft tissues that are under stretch can settle down and then and then the load is put somewhere else. Now, that's normal. You haven't caused any damage and certainly um, nothing long-lasting. It's just um, for that finite amount of time, you let the stress go away and then your body responds and, and settles down as a result. And again, it's the same with training, isn't it? You, if you do a load of bicep curls, you don't then do a load more an hour later and then do mm. arms again the next day and then the next day. Mm. You work really hard and then rest to let your body recover, don't you? Exactly, and train something else. Exactly right, yeah. Absolutely. It's just being about, it's I pull this information, isn't it? And it's bringing it to the forefront of their mind to think, so in the week, you know, the week week's coming up when we're still going to be sat down for too long, people to think about this information and it, to sort of go in and think, actually, yeah, if something rings, ring, ring, if something, um, you know, you remember something in the week and think, oh, yeah, I heard about that talk. I need to get up and move around, just change my position a bit. Yeah, yeah. All things are helpful, aren't they, to kind of... And I, and I think the other thing is that um, there's also a bit of a connotation where we say to people, you need to take regular break, but there's this feeling that you need to leave the office or, or um, go for a half-hour walk or... or and it doesn't need to be as, as technical as that or as complicated as that. It's literally maybe stand up, march on the spot, roll your shoulders a little bit, maybe do a few head movements side to side, sit back down, reset, and then you're good to go again. And it's as quick and as easy as that. It doesn't need to be technical. It doesn't need to be complicated or anything. So it's, it's keep things simple. Would you, and I, would you suggest if people are working from home, they're working from a laptop, you know, if they've got a desk set up, maybe they could just move to the sofa for a little while and kind of just dot around just to kind of... Yeah. I, and would you would you recommend that? I would, I where possible, I would avoid using laptops for long periods of time. They're, okay. they're, the problem with a laptop is that it's very, you become quite hunched around it almost because the keyboard, the screen, everything is quite close together. So yeah, for short periods of time, that's going to be absolutely fine. But... I wouldn't be doing a full day working on a laptop. So certainly we would always promote, um, a lot of people have docking stations now, so they've got their laptop and then they have an external uh, keyboard and screen or two screens some people yeah. have. Yeah, well, okay. That's probably going quite above and beyond. The easiest way is to generally is just to get an external keyboard, mm -hmm. which you can connect into your laptop. And then you just prop the laptop up on some boxes or whatever. So your laptop is, so the screen is then higher, so it's at your eye level. Yeah. And then you're at you're on the keyboard at a decent height for you. So there's, there's a, but again, like you said, it might be you do, you could do half an hour start on the sofa. Why not? Um, and again, we can go back to that word balance of, of position, really. Yeah. It's just thinking it out, isn't it? And thinking, right, okay. What can I do? Um, and obviously the stretches as well. I know with with my line of work, I'm constantly hunched over. Yeah. Um, you know, when I'm I'm doing skin treatments, I'm permanently like this. So in between clients, I do really try and stretch out as much as I can. But sometimes that's quite difficult when you know in busy times. Um, so yeah, I feel that my posture is really. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's my posture isn't great um, just through my line of work. So sure. it's just remembering to do certain stretches as much as I can. Um, but for people who are in the same boat doing it, I mean, what what would you suggest? Would you just... I mean, sometimes, like, like if, you've got, if you've got a busy day with clients back to back and there just isn't going to be physically time to fit in doing some stretches and things, then you're going to have to leave, do them at the end of the day type thing. And that's, yeah. and that's, that, that, that's perfectly all right. And again... Yeah. It would be good if you could do some during the day, but life is life, isn't it? And there's yeah. practicality to everything that we do. Um, so I would be looking to just do, if, especially if I had a long, busy day, um, 
get on YouTube or join one of our classes and do a yoga class or get, there, there's there's loads of different ways that you can mm. stretch. I've done some working from home videos on our YouTube channel. So there's, it's, there's easy stuff to do. Um, it's just a case of uh, allotting that time, I think, isn't it? That's the key. Yeah. Absolutely. I think also being mindful of the day, you're looking at the day, a bit of an overview. Because if you're spending eight hours sitting at a desk or you're sitting, working, you can't do much about that because you presumably you have, you have to work. And that's what you need to do, sit there. And there's not an awful you can do about that. But be mindful about how you spend the rest of your day. So there's more hours in the day. You know, if you spend eight hours in bed and eight hours working, you spend the rest of the time watching telly, sitting again. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. If that doesn't help. So just be mindful of how you spend the rest of your day. Try and get up a bit earlier, maybe. Get a bit of exercise in early. Mm. Or when you finish work, try and leave the house or do a bit of activity. Or put in, like I say, do a YouTube video or do a class or, or get out for a walk or something. Don't then spend, you know, six hours in the evening binging on Netflix <laughs> because it's well, yeah, nice no point. Go out. Don't sit for eight hours at work and then sit for three hours or four hours in the evening. Yeah. Well, that isn't going to be helpful to it's you. Just so be mindful, rubbish, isn't it? Look at that whole day as a, as a whole rather than just the eight hours you've got to spend sat down working. Mm. Um, yeah, try and get up earlier. It's not, I know it's January, it's cold, it's dark, it's often wet, yeah. but try and, try and go out and do something. And I think, uh, especially with that, there's definitely more flexibility with work now, isn't there? With working yeah. from home and all that type of thing. So I think it, even trying to do do a four hour shift in the morning and just to make sure you take an hour for lunch and then. And, and Great and idea. Yeah, time. I love that. Yeah, it's easy to so once you once you're in a work at home and you've got a lot of work to do, you may it could be very tempting, and you're on your own maybe it can be tempting just to sort of sit there and carry on working and just eat at your desk or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At work as well, and it'd be tempting mm. to get up and think, oh yeah, I'll take an hour out so I can go and do a walk or walk your dog, whatever it is. Yeah. But yeah, it refreshes everything. As well, do something. It? it just it refreshes everything. You mm. you know. Just having that break, having a walk, getting some fresh air, coming back, you're reset, you know, and you're you're raring to go. That, mm. you know, I just think, yeah, brilliant, brilliant mm. idea. So it's, you know, I mean, you're you're based in Christchurch, Paul. Yep. So um, tell us a little bit more about Bridge. Okay, so we are on Bridge Street, so opposite the civic offices. Um, most people, we always tell people we're in the um, Christchurch Power Tool buildings because everybody knows Christchurch Power Tools if you've come from Christchurch. So, oh, I know. Where you are now, you said that, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I've lived here all my life. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So so that, big, um, explain to everyone what you had outside at Christmas time. The big bag. So, we had a bit, we've got, so we, a friend of mine has a, um, a signage company he's done all our signage and he got a banner done what at last lockdown with a thank you nhs banner and he put it up on his factory and i said oh that'd be really good to have at the clinic so we got one of them done and then he said well these are good because you just literally you just rip there you just screw them into the wall they're, they're temporary signs so they're nice and easy to put up and down they're just banners so you can have maybe a few going throughout the, the year and we got to towards Christmas and um, I said to Louise, well, it would be quite good if we put a Christmas banner up and we, is this what you're talking about, Kirsty? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I am. And I last am. year we had a digital um, Christmas card done of me and Louise, sort of caricature, caricature type thing of the two of us stood outside the clinic. So I said, well, we could get that done as the banner and put that up on the um, on the wall. So we're I'm in an R in what to do, and I said, well, we can't get anything else, so we will just get it done. So we had it done, and there's a great there's a great big mural basically of us two stood outside the clinic, and Louise was um she's been so pleased with this caricature because it makes her uh, uh shall I say it it makes her look um wholesome, shall we say, and she was. <laughs> He was convinced that somebody was going to go along with a sharpie and, and uh, do some graffiti on it. But, um, I think lockdown probably meant that there's been less footfall and less people out, and the pubs have been closed, haven't they? So yeah. that totally, it didn't get um, it didn't get touched. So it's ready to go for next year now. So it is brilliant. It is really really good. It does make me smile. It, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's really um, 
Yeah, I love it. And it, it does look so much like you guys. <laughs> so it really does. It's brilliant. But she did mention someone's going to go along with the Sharpie. I'm just waiting for it. I'm just waiting for it. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, no, I'm pleased it didn't. I'm pleased no one, uh, no one did. So, yeah, so we've got our clinic um, on Bridge Street. So we have, um, we've got three um, treatment rooms. Um, I do map the physio. We've got two massage therapists. Unfortunately, they can't work at the moment. Got a nice rehab gym, so all of my clients, pretty much all of my clients, get put through some rehab at some point. Um, we offer rehab classes, and which I oversee, and then we've got our studio as well, which Louise. So I keep talking about Louise. So Louise is my wife, um, client of Kirsty's, um, and she is our Pilates instructor and sort of runs the studio side of the business. Um, so she does the Pilates, we've got yoga, we do Qigong, we do a monthly mindfulness class, and sadly all of those have had to go online, so we've gone from, I think we've got up to about nine, 18 or 19 classes just before Christmas um, at the studio, um, and, that, and that's now gone down to just under 10, 9 or 10 I think, because we're just having to condense everything with going online. Um, so... Yes, we're, I'll admit I've had a bit of a down day. I just felt a bit frustrated by everything today, which is so. It's been nice to come on here and have a bit of a, a yeah. nap. We do, don't we? We have these days where you sort of get a bit kind of aim well with everything and everything you just think, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it just comes in waves, doesn't it? Yeah, it yeah. Really I think, yeah. yeah it's, we're just, it's just very frustrating and disappointing, I suppose, because mm -hmm. we, we've shown that we can we can – grow and develop even in these challenging times and mm. if we hadn't have had the pandemic who knows where we'd be mm. at 18 months of trading but it, it's I yeah, yeah. But a i won't go on too much about that <laughs> i've been um sorry we're going off topic now i've been helping yeah. Vic this week um with the covid vaccines and um i i'm feeling quite positive this week because the amount of people i've seen come in to have their vaccinations, it's just been absolutely amazing. It's been incredible, the amount of number, you know, obviously they're going with the elderly first and the amount of foot flow that's been coming through. Mm. And they're expected to do 1,300 patients per day from Monday. So that yeah. ends up being about 30, a jab every 30 seconds. So, mm. you know, kind of seeing it firsthand, it's, it's, it's a really good thing. And I just think, you know, there's so much negative news out there and I've kind of just stopped listening to the news altogether. Um, and yeah. Um, yeah, just every day that I'm working, I'm, I'm volunteering there. So every time I'm there, I've seen it for myself and I'm just like this, yeah, we're on a, we're on a good, uh, mm. good road, I think. We're gonna, we're gonna be out of this soon, definitely. Yeah, so, I, I really sorry, do hope. I, 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 I did, sorry. No, I, I, it's, I it's very know. topical, isn't it? It's, um, it's very relevant. Um, it, it is, it's affecting us all in very different ways, but all in the same way, I suppose, isn't yeah. it? That's the, yeah. the strange thing about it. Yeah, that's it. And it's, I mean, it's okay to, to kind of go through that wave of having down days as well. And that's okay. And that's expected, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, sorry, going back to your clinic, Paul, I just wanted to say, for those who haven't been to the clinic before, I have to say it's so lovely and it's so welcoming um, and as you go in obviously you're to the right um, you've got reception and then Louise um, has her classes on the left hand side and That's you right. go down and it's just so airy it's it's really lovely it's really really nice I think you've done a really good job of um, you know setting everything out because when you bought it you completely gutted it is that right did you yeah, so it was quite a big open office. So the back of it where the clinic rooms are, they were as were. So we haven't had to touch them, which has been a re perfect, really. Mm. And then it was a big open office at the front and to the side where the studio is. So we've had to basically create the gym space and the studio space. And it, it we're not going to lie, it's been it's a big undertaking. It's costing us a lot of money. Um, which is probably another reason why I was frustrated because I was sort of looking at the books as well today. But um, it's mm -hmm. but again, it, that that's life. But we didn't. The reason we've done that is we wanted to do something a bit different. We wanted to be able. We didn't want to just be a studio. We didn't yeah. just want to be a, a treatment room. We want yeah. to be a, uh, a. We want to be known as a family-run business. That's our underpinning 
sort of moral, I suppose, that we want to be known as Louise and Paul and with great clinicians and um, instructors working with us. But what we also want to be able to offer is something a bit different. So you don't just come for physio, you don't just come for a massage, you don't just come for a class. We want you to invest almost in yourself. Um, and that's one of our big things. So we just launched the membership, unfortunately, in December, and now we've gone into lockdown. So that's been a bit limiting. And the whole tagline on that was invest in your health. So the idea being that you come and use us. And, and, and it, we're not a gym and we're not a standalone treatment room. We're sort of a hybrid almost somewhere in between where you can come and, and um, use us but to help yourself. That's the idea. Yeah. And I think you've done that so far. I think from what I've seen, you've done that. So I think you've done a really good job. Really Thank good you. Job. Yeah, we're, we're very oh, pleased to be. It really does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if, if someone's got an ache, a pain, something that's kind of niggling them, something that they feel that's not right, so what would be, how would they get in touch with you? So the, it, they can go, they, there's a contact us page on the website, so you can do that through there. Our, there are contact details all on there. You can message us through Facebook and things like that. You can phone the clinic. Um, and if you if you want to book, you can book online on the website as well. So that takes you What's straight. What's your website, Paul? Say again, sorry. What's your website? www.bridgehw.com. There we go. Jenny's putting it in the comments. So people who are watching can click on that link um, and go straight to you. Amazing. There Great. you go. There you go. We're Great. everywhere, that website, everywhere now. <laughs> there you go. It's there. It's there. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much. No um, problem at all. So I think the main thing to say is that what we want to just make people aware is that if you do get in contact, there's clearly no obligation to to book or anything like that. We want to be here to support people. So we'll chat on the phone. We'll reply to emails. We'll direct you to our YouTube channel because there's quite a lot of information on there now. Um, and that and that's that's important. We're not, clearly, we're, we're a business. We, we're here to make money. That's the bottom line, I suppose. But our bigger the bigger picture than that is we want to help people so that that's the that's yeah. the most important thing yeah absolutely. i love that Paul. thank you so much for coming on tonight it'd be really lovely talking to you about um as one of my adriana one of my ladies who is watching the wonderful art of balancing life that's there what we go. all need perfect yeah. words adriana one of my lovely ladies watching yeah. there tonight yeah. Uh, but no, it's really been good talking. Very kind of very current. Um, great, great advice. Um, sensible yeah. advice. Yeah. Manageable advice. You know, we can all do these things as well. So it's really helpful, and it's really lovely to hear about your um, your studio as well. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. We've uh, so next week. What do we have coming up, Jenny? We have another lady called Louise coming on next week who is has got a local business based in Hordle and she does juicing. Um, and she's found her business since lockdown. She's a great success story, actually. She um, She's another fitness friend of mine. Um, but her business has gone, exploded, I think, over the last kind of year or so. Um, people want to invest more into their health. And, um, yeah, so she does all her own, all her, all her own juicing and she delivers... And we're going to talk about juicing, health, nutrition. Yeah. She's big up on all of that. So that's another really, really interesting this week. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Sounds good. Amazing. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all up. who's... Um, who's there you go. Tonight. Bridge. Oh, amazing. Um, Thank you very much. There's the uh, the website to contact uh, Paul. And, uh, yeah, thank you again, Paul. No and, problem. Uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. See you soon, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Have a good evening. Bye.